The 79th playing of the World Series features the American League champions against the winners of the National League. The Milwaukee Brewers versus the St. Louis Cardinals. of glaring contrast is in the cards as the Brewers boast the most productive run scoring attack in baseball with a lineup that includes four hitters who drove in more than 100 runs each and they'll face the St. Louis Cardinals. These cards rely on speed, timely hitting, defense and pitching. It's all here as NBC Sports presents the 1982 World Series. First ball honors go to Cardinal owner August A. Bush Jr. And as the pregame ceremonies are completed, the 79th World Series is underway. Bob Porsche delivers to leadoff man Paul Molitor, and it's an easy play for the first out. Up next for the Brewers is Robin Yount, a strong candidate for the American League's Most Valuable Player Award. It's a single for Yount, and the series has its first base runner. Following a walk and a second out, the Brewers send up Ben Ogilvy, who's been troubled by sore ribs. But Benji's feeling no pain as he rips one past Keith Hernandez, allowing Yount to scoot home and put Milwaukee up one to nothing. Now, with the man on third and two out, Gorman Thomas is at bat. Shortstop Ozzie Smith gets over but can't hang on, and it's two to nothing Brewers. The first inning is emblematic of the entire game. It's the Brewers and not Whitey Herzog's Cardinals who are getting the better bounces on the turf. Meanwhile, Milwaukee's Harvey Keene has to be pleased as starter Mike Caldwell, who had lost his last three outings, stays in control as the Brewers stay on the ball. Control is catcher Ted Simmons guiding his pitcher Mike Caldwell through a masterful performance. At one point, Caldwell retires 12 men in a row. The battery of Caldwell and Simmons is electric, and it's not surprising that Simmons is more than a little turned on. He was traded from St. Louis to Milwaukee in that now famous seven man deal, and this is his homecoming. And what better way to celebrate a homecoming than with a home run before family and friends? Simmons' fifth inning blast makes the score four to nothing Brewers. And as the game goes on, Whitey Herzog appears trapped behind the eight ball as he's forced to keep his bullpen hopping. The first Cardinal on in relief is 43-year-old Jim Cott, now the second oldest man to play in a World Series. Coming on with a score six to nothing, Cott managed to hold Milwaukee, yielding only this single and a walk in the seventh. But in the ninth, Dave LaPointe, another figure in the big Cardinal Brewer trade, isn't as lucky as he gives up two runs. After LaPointe comes rookie reliever Jeff Lottie. But the Milwaukee merry-go-round continues. In the ninth, Paul Molitor caps off the Brewers' 10-run onslaught in style. A series record fifth base hit, breaking the mark of four held by many, including NBC's own Joe Garagiola there on the left. It's been a comfortable night for Harvey Keene, as it has for Mike Caldwell, up by 10 runs with one out to go. 
2-1 goes to Milwaukee, and the Brewers congratulate the left-hander from North Carolina on a masterpiece. Game 6, Tuesday, October 19th. Bad weather is predicted, but the spirits of St. Louis are undampened during the pregame festivities as a cartload of former Cardinal greats, including Stan Musial, is saluted. The Cardinals are but one game away from elimination, yet there are many among the sellout crowd anticipating a seventh game against Milwaukee and the healthy return of pitching ace Joaquin Andahar. Tonight, John Stuper, who began the season in the minor leagues, is on the spot, but he appears to have a grip on what it's all about. Getting the call for Milwaukee once again is Don Sutton, whose National League career record in Bush Stadium is 7-14. But in the first, Sutton is more concerned with winning a World Series crown than he is about jinxes. And he, too, looks sharp, retiring the Cardinals in order. With two out in the bottom of the second, designated hitter Dane Orge, batting 400 in the series, squares off. Ogilvy can't hang on. It's a fair ball and a double for Orge. Now Sutton looks in to find the lineup's number seven batter, Willie McGee. On past Robin Yount, a two-out era allowing the first run of the game. Yount's era is Milwaukee's eighth of the series, and now hoping to take advantage is Tom Hur with just one hit and 19 at-bats. Charlie Moore uncorks an awesome throw, but catcher Ted Simmons can't handle the hop, and Willie McGee is safe. Two to nothing, Cardinals. In the bottom of the third, the Cardinals again have something going with two outs. Leading off third base is Lonnie Smith. As Sutton starts his motion, Smith is coming, and he's out. Many wondered if Lonnie Smith was in fact safe. After watching the replay, people are still wondering. Oddly enough, the last man to steal home in a World Series was Cardinal Tim McCarver, there with Bob Gibson. It was against the Yankees in the 1964 World Series. Mike Shannon was on first, and McCarver on third with nobody out in the fourth inning of Game 7. On the mound was Jim Bouton, and at the plate, Dow Maxville. Shannon wheels for second, and on the throw, McCarver deals and steals home. Now the 82 wheeling and dealing cards keep their fans fired up in the fourth when with nobody out, Darrell Porter bats with a man on. It's a home run, and the Cardinals are out in front, four to nothing. The Redbirds are soaring, especially a sky-high Daryl Porter, clearly elated. Somewhat downcast, the Brewers look on as a man who's given them trouble stands in, Dane Orge. It's a triple for Orge, rapidly becoming known as the Great Dane. Following an infield out, Whitey Herzog makes a move. With Orge still on third and Tom Hurd bat, the squeeze is on, and it's five to nothing. In the bottom of the fifth, with the Brewers still trailing by five runs, a serious deluge is in progress. In this kind of weather, it's tough to keep the powder dry. 
but Keith Hernandez finds a way to blast a rocket. The Cardinals are out in front now, seven to nothing. And that doesn't make Harvey Keene's walk to the mound any easier. But at this time, the umpires decide to suspend play. Now the waiting game begins as the first of two rain delays last 26 minutes. The second delay goes on for more than two hours. But baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn gets a promise from the weatherman. And under clearing skies, the game goes on. However, as the Brewers found out, the rain won't let up, and neither will the Cardinals. a six-run outburst in the rain-delayed sixth, the Cardinals now lead Milwaukee 12 to nothing. Amazingly, still on the mound after both rain delays is durable John Stuper, who retires 15 batters in a row with a little help from his friends. managed to break the shutout, scraping for a run in the ninth. But now, as Stuper looks in, Milwaukee is down to its final out. With a devastating 13-1 victory and a contest that took more than five hours to play, the Cardinals have even the series at three games apiece. Now, both teams look forward to a dry clubhouse and a dramatic conclusion less than 24 hours away. St. Louis, 13 runs, 12 hits, 1 error. Milwaukee, 1 run, 4 hits, 4 errors. Wednesday, October 20th, and Bush Memorial Stadium is aglow with the excitement generated by a World Series 7th game. And Cardinal fans are delighted by the appearance of their late-season ace, Joaquin Andahar, a winner of nine straight since mid-August. Andahar's status has been in doubt since Game 3, five days before, when he suffered this jolt to his right leg. But the right-hander likes to refer to himself as one tough Dominican, and the Cardinals are hoping in Game 7 he can help carry them. And getting the call for the Brewers this night is Burley Pete Vukovic, a loser in his last three starts, but always a tough competitor. With no score in the second, the Redbirds have two runners on, and Ozzie Smith is at the plate. Robin Yap feels the ball but can't make a play, and the bases are loaded. With two outs, Vukovic works carefully as he delivers to Lonnie Smith. The inning is over, and it's clear that emotions are running high. Moving to the bottom of the fourth, there's still no score as Willie McGee leads off. Another single advances McGee to third, and one out later, the next batter is Lonnie Smith. Six for 25 in the series. Yao prevents the ball from going through, but McGee scores, and it's one to nothing Cardinals.
Following the fielder's choice for the second out, Vukovic is still concerned about a runner at third as he faces Keith Hernandez. The strikeout ends the fourth, and the Brewers escape the inning, allowing only one run. Meanwhile, in Milwaukee, thousands of fans like these are waiting for the Brewers to explode. And in the top of the fifth, Ben Ogilvy obliges with a home run. It's now a tie ball game in St. Louis, and happy time in Milwaukee. The Beer City celebration continues into the top of the sixth when the inning is led off by Jim Gantner. Gantner's double, the next batter is Paul Molitor, looking to advance the runner. Andahar covers quickly, but his throw is ill-advised. Gantner scores on the play, and the Brewers go ahead 2-1. to one. Soon, Cecil Cooper lifts a fly to left, keeping his eye on the ball to make sure it's deep enough to score the runner from third on a tag-up. It is, and Milwaukee now leads three to one. Now with two outs, Ben Ogilvy is at bat looking to drive in another run. But Tom Hur makes a fine play, and the inning is over. And as the game moves into the bottom of the sixth, the World Series begins to reach a focal point. And with one out, Ozzie Smith is at bat. As one Smith holds it first, another comes to bat. Lonnie Smith, no relation, but very much a fellow Redbird. Now there are runners at second and third, just one out, and the Brewers decide to make a pitching change. The new focus of attention is left-hander Bob McClure, who allows a walk and then faces his former neighbor and high school teammate from California, Keith Hernandez, who on this night is celebrating his 29th birthday. runner Mike Ramsey pulls into third as two runs score on the Hernandez double and the ball game is all tied. Up next is George Hendrick with five hits in his last ten at bats. As Hendrick adds another Ramsey scores to give the Cardinals a four to three lead. High fives all around, and Cardinal fans have high expectations for the innings to come. As the game moves into the seventh, it appears that Andahar hasn't lost any of his concentration, nor any of his stuff. But the next batter, Roy Lee Howell, tees off, turning Lonnie Smith every which way. But Smith hangs on. Following a single, the next batter is Jim Gantner. Andahar makes the play, but then the pressure of the moment boils over as the pitcher and Gantner talk about something other than the weather. But umpire Lee Wire intercedes, and once again, Joaquin Andahar is helped from a World Series field. In the bottom of the eighth, Harvey Keene turns to his bullpen for Mike Caldwell after two men have reached base. At bat is Daryl Porter, hitless in four trips.
Johnny Smith races around the score, and the Cardinals are now ahead 5-3. to three. The next batter is pinch hitter Steve Braun. Another run scores, and it's 6-3 to three Cardinals. The grimness on the Milwaukee bench may in part be inspired by the St. Louis Miracle Man, who's retired five men in a row. Bullpen ace, Bruce Souter. Now in the ninth, the Cardinals are one out away from victory. With the count full, Souter pitches to Gorman Thomas. It's all over, and St. Louis has won the 1982 World Series. It's the Cardinals' first world championship in 15 years, and the ninth in the history of the franchise. And now, pandemonium and joy reign side by side at Bush Stadium. The line score of Game 7, St. Louis 6 runs, 15 hits, 1 error, Milwaukee 3 runs, 7 hits, no errors. For many, this Cardinal championship means a lot, but for aging owner Gussie Bush, it ranks as one of the brightest moments in the 30 years he has held the franchise. For Whitey Herzog, the title is the culmination of the often difficult task of building a winner. And for Darrell Porter, the championship is crowned by being named the series MVP. This has been Warner Fusell for the 1982 World Series.